Good afternoon and we will uh, today discuss on uh, accounting adjustments required while calculating EVA. EVA, let me just recap, EVA is an excess of no pad over capital charge, but it is important to say that EVA is not a gap number is a managerial or an investment analyst driven number and it tries to address the following two limitation that is the financing anomalies and accounting anomalies. The financing anomaly which is there in the normal accounting profit is that interest is an expense but dividend is an appropriation of profit. As a result, the cost of equity is ignored while calculating that the accounting profit. The accounting anomalies, however, arise due to the differences in the generally accepted accounting principles or options given under GAP regarding with respect to COGS, with respect to depreciation, amortization, lease and deferred tax. We will pick up some of them to understand the accounting anomalies. So, EVA therefore, as I mentioned, is a no pat minus the VAC into capital employed and no pat is profit after tax plus adjusted interest plus minus the accounting adjustments. Similarly, capital employed is total assets minus the NIBCL non-interest bearing current liabilities plus minus the accounting adjustment. So, the focus is accounting adjustments. Let us take an example with respect to COGS and inventory. In accounting, inventory is valued at the cost or the market value whichever is lower because of the conservative principle. So in this case, if purchase is 50, closing stock is 20,000, the market value is 12. For accounting, I take COGS as 50 minus 10, that is 40,000. And for balance sheet, I take the asset as 10,000. How different is that for EVA? For EVA, as we said, the market will be taken for the COGS and the inventory. So if you see here, accounting takes the COGS as 40, but for EVA, I take the COGS as 32 because of the inventory valuation. Accounting takes stock as 10, but whereas the EVA, I take a stock as 12,000. Higher stock and lower profit is because of accounting adjustment for COGS and inventory. Now let us take the amortization and R&D. For that also let me take an example. So R&D is 40,000 and amortize it 5 years. Amortization is an allocation of cost over the life, so I am allocating it. But for EVA, amortization is not allowed. They say that you try to impair the asset. So, no amortization, whereas in accounting, I amortize over 5 years. So, each year I charge 8,000 and in the balance sheet, slowly the value of the asset goes down, whereas in EVA, I will show the asset R&D as 40,000 as long as it is not impaired. So, once again, expenses goes down, asset goes up because of accounting adjustment. Let me pick up one more and that is about the lease. Accounting gives you a freedom of treating the lease as operating lease or a finance lease. Please refer to our discussion on the leases in detail. So in accounting, if I treat something as an operating lease, then I show there is an expense, no asset, no liability. But EVA says no operating lease, treat all leases as a finance lease. So there comes the difference between accounting profit and economic profit. Take this example, 5,000. Lease period is 4 years, interest is 8%. For accounting, I show that expense is 5,000, no asset, no liability. But for EVA, I classify that asset on the uh, uh, into or the lease into interest and depreciation for income statement. And for the balance sheet, I show the present value of the lease payable as the value of the asset. And every year, I reduce depreciation from that to show 
the cost of the asset minus depreciation on the balance sheet. So in case of, uh, in case of lease, the income statement will show only the lease expense, no balance sheet, whereas adjusted statements will be for balance sheet as well as the income statement. So to, 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 to summarize, I say that no PAT or rather accounting adjustment affect no PAT because no PAT is a profit after tax plus minus adjustment. In the same way, capital employed is also adjusted due to the accounting adjustment. And such accounting adjustments are called equity equivalents or the debt equivalents depending on the items for which you make those accounting adjustments. So the question which often comes is what is the relevance of accounting adjustments or equity uh, equivalents on the, annual, on the profitability of the company, on understanding the share prices of the company? The propounders or, or the developers of EVA say that EVA is a better reflector of the performance of a company, therefore it reflects the share price better. But however, it is subject to certain empirical understanding and observation. But what is important to understand that EVA is another important performance indicator with accounting adjustments. Thank you very much.